what does it mean when the Lord began to speak with me about the wedding of the Lamb of God? And I can trace back the conversations from 11th of November the year 2003 when he was pursuing me to talk to me about this mighty wedding of the Lamb so I may come and serve him. And at that time I did not understand the calling. And that was the voice that was saying, Go tell the four ends of the earth to repent and prepare the way of the Lord. You see that? And I did not understand. And then it came down to, because it was difficult at that time to perceive the gravity, even the depth of what that means. And then the 2nd of April, the year 2004, when finally in that mighty visitation of the Lord, the Lord finally presented John the Baptist on my right hand side, and John the Baptist began to speak with me about the wedding of the Lamb of God, about the coming of the glorious Lamb of God. Hmm? What does that mean to the church? And then, all the things about that visitation we published, you can be able to read them, I don't want to go into that. And then the 17th, by the way, 17th of March, the year 2004, the first time, in a mighty vision, showed me how he is coming to take the, to rapture the church. Mm -hmm. The day the Lord walked for me across the sky, and every footprint he left was glorious, glorious across the sky. I could see everywhere he walked in that mighty visitation. And then he showed me how the rapture will take place, how he would rapture their sleep in the dust of the earth, and also how he would rapture the holy living Christians. You see that? After that, I am jumping into the 1st of November, the year 2006, when he presented the wedding rings in the sky. Now talking about the wedding of the Lamb of God. Two wedding rings, one for Christ, the Messiah, and the other for the church. And then, come now the 26th of November, 2006, at Kehancha, when we had this binational repentance at Sirare, Tanzania, and also... Kehancha. Then he speaks with me how they are asleep in the dust of the earth. Those who are dead Christian, holy dead, the righteous people who died when they were righteous, they had repented. How they will be raptured and caught up in the wedding of the Lamb. And then, after that, the 3rd of May, I'm just mentioning the main conversations that God has been speaking that our brethren from Rwanda, Uganda, Tanzania, they are all, I know they are, these two are updated. But the, 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 the third of May, the clock of God in the sky, when he finally lowered down the clock of the Lord, the clock that is one minute to midnight. You see that? 11.59 p.m. You see? And then finally, November, November 20th, the year 2007, when he showed me the house of the Lord, the dome, the golden dome in that vision, and then the scaffold metal and the roof of the church. But the dome was sitting on top of the church. And then the glory of the Lord came from heaven and settled on the dome, but did not enter the church. And then the voice of the Lord brought me very close, face to face with the door to the house of the Lord, which was closed. And the voice of the Lord said, let us enter into the house of the Lord. And the door was open, the double arched door opened. <coughs> and when I entered there, I saw a lot of, almost multi-millions of chairs. I could not see where they ended. They were black. And then grass began to grow in the church. And the voice of the Lord said, they used to worship here, but not anymore. After that, April 8th, when finally he interpreted that vision. But in between, March 26th, 2008, before April 8th, he now shows me the temple of the Lord in heaven. The temple of God Almighty in heaven. So, how does that relate to the door to rapture? Hallelujah. 
listen to me, precious people. When the Lord engaged the church in all these conversations, there is one very important thing that remained common, common, you can call it a common denominator in all these conversations. And that is in every visitation, in every single vision, the Lord was speaking to me about these issues. It began by heaven opened. You see that? The door to heaven opened into the sky. Before the rings were brought down into the sky, heaven opened. Before the clock was lowered, heaven opened. Before the glory came and settled on the dome, heaven opened. Hmm? Before the temple of God was unveiled, heaven opened. You see that? And so, the Lord has been using that to speak to the church. He has been telling the church, how come you can't see that I have opened the door? Hallelujah. I have opened the door. The door is open. And when the door is open, that means he's telling the church to get herself ready and enter. Hallelujah. You cannot wait. You will not be able to wait for the day of the rapture. Because on that day, he essentially, he closes the door. You understand? The door will be closed. That is the most important thing you need to understand. If you are waiting for the rapture, you will miss the rapture. Don't wait for rapture. Make sure you get yourself ready and enter. Look at the five wise virgins. They lit their lamps here. And when the door was open, they entered with the same lamps in. Hallelujah. And so God is talking about the need for the church to trim their lamps, okay? And get ready and enter through that door. But listen to this. I want to start somewhere. The book of Matthew. Matthew 24. And I want to go a little bit deeper, but as the Lord will help me, okay? So we can be able to be in the same page with the brethren from Rwanda. So they can go and teach this in their country. You see? Because we don't know the day, we don't know the hour. But we understand the message. The message says time is out, right? Yes, yeah, so Matthew 24. I want to read only a few verses. We can begin from verse 4 up to verse 9. And this is what he says. He says, watch out. Jesus answered, watch out that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name claiming I am the Christ. You see that? And will deceive many. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, there will be famines and earthquakes in various places. Verse 8, you want to pay special attention to that. He says, all these are the beginning of birth pain. Do you hear me, somebody? Remember from Indonesia, that was August, we were there August 5th all the way. And the Lord started speaking to me about the famine coming to the earth. You see that? And I started talking about global famine that is coming to the earth. That's going to affect Kenya very badly. Look at where we're sitting today. Global famine has entered the globe, the earth. Food shortage. Hallelujah. The earthquakes. You remember recently, is it two weeks ago, whenever it was? A week. Talking to the radio, 